What's up guys, you're watching Nail That Tone, a series that's all about helping you guys achieve some of the most legendary tones of all time. This is episode number four, and in this episode we're taking a look at John Sykes' 1987 White Snake guitar tone. There's a lot of cool stuff to talk about, so let's get to it. Hey guys, so we're talking about John Sykes, and the first thing I want to talk about is again the importance of finger tone. And in this particular episode, I really want to highlight John Sykes's amazing guitar attack and his interesting playing style. So I think every player has a unique way they pick and they attack the strings. And it's very obvious from listening to the record and watching uh, some live videos of him is that he's just definitely a big strummer and he likes to you know, really attack the strings and really kind of let them ring out. And I think that's a big part of that really big and full sound that we hear on the record and pretty much on any record that he's ever played on. Now to illustrate the importance of this and how this affects our tone, I recorded two different examples. In the first example you'll hear, you'll kind of hear a wimpy kind of lighter attack on the strings. Something that's, uh, I guess, more suited to somebody who's kind of delicate with the way they pick and they sort of, they're a bit more percussive and they like to mute the, the strings a lot more rather than uh, the second example that you'll hear is a lot more kind of open and really letting the strings ring out as much as possible and attacking the strings a lot more so we'll hear that this can actually affect our tone quite a bit so let's take a listen to those two examples <laughs> So as you guys heard and saw in the examples, uh, playing again with that big kind of attack definitely affects our tone quite a bit. So the next thing I want to talk about is the gear that was used on this particular album. Now from the research I did, it looks like if we're starting with the amplifiers that John Sykes was using his Mesa Boogie Mark III Coliseum. Now the difference between a regular boogie like the one I have here which also happens to be a Mark III, is that the Coliseum has two extra power tubes. With the two extra power tubes, that means you get a lot more power, almost pretty much double the power in terms of wattage, and definitely, I'm assuming, a lot more headroom and just sheer volume and in mass. We kind of definitely hear that on this particular record. Again, that's the main amp that was used on this particular record. It is noted that John Sykes did use some of his uh, other Marshalls, some JCM 800s and modified Jose Marshalls. And, but the core sound of that album really is the Boogie Mark III Coliseum heads that of course John Sykes liked and played. So when it comes to cabinets that were used, it looks like during the recording sessions they used different type of Marshall cabinets, as well as using different microphones on different cabinets and using a different combination of different microphones to again blend and mix them together to really kind of nail that tone that they really wanted. So when it comes to guitars, it looks like John Sykes was using his very beloved 70s Les Paul Custom, which we see him play a lot. And I'm assuming it's a, an amazing guitar with a, a great tone. That's why he loves it and used it so much. Another interesting fact I'd like to share with you guys is that the legendary producer Bob Rock actually played a pretty big part when it comes to this tone on this particular album. Bob Rock was actually in the studio working on another album with a different band and when John Sykes and the other producer couldn't get a sound 
uh, that they liked after a few weeks, they actually invited Bob Rock to help out a little bit and give his own ideas. So Bob Rock came up with his formula of what he thought would make the tone sound good. So Bob Rock really came up with a formula using different microphones and different cabs and splitting the signal and recording multiple tracks and of course adding some of that modulation we hear on the tracks. And that was pretty much the core sound of that 87 White Snake album. So when it comes to the gear that I use, as you can see, I have my Mesa Boogie Mark III. This particular Mark III is a 100 watt head. So it has a lot of headroom and a lot of power. I know if you had the master at around two, it's, it's already super loud and just totally opens up and sounds great and definitely one of my favorites. One thing I'll also note is that when it comes to the lead channel and in terms of the amount of gain I used, I actually rolled the gain down quite a bit and had the lead master at around four, four and a half, which is actually pretty similar to what I've heard John Sykes use on that particular record. He said that he had the gain lower so that he could get some, a little bit more clarity, but still have enough distortion and crunch to you know, really have that nice big full sound. When it comes to the graphic EQ, I did do kind of the traditional V shape, but I did not scoop as much amids as you would for say a Metallica type tone or Dream Theater kind of thing. I think it um, it's a great sound. That's the settings that I use and I'm happy to share the settings with you guys. So when it comes to cabinets, I use my Marshall 1960 AV. Uh, I use this cabinet a lot and it's got the Marshall V30. When it comes to microphones, I just use traditional SM57, mic'd it in different positions to kind of get a different blend of sort of heavier versus more brighter sounds. When it comes to guitars, I use my Gibson Les Paul and this is a 2013 model. It's got the 57 pickups in it. It has that Les Paul sound. In general, it's a pretty good guitar. It doesn't stay in tune that well, which is a pretty common uh, thing among Gibsons is I don't always stay in tune very well. Definitely has that big full sound that you would expect out of a Les Paul. So when it comes to replacements on what we can use or what I would recommend using if we don't have this kind of high-end stuff, I would recommend really using any kind of high-gain amplifier to get you pretty close or even a mid-gain amplifier. Um, I think the important thing there is that you want to, again, at least do what I did and what John Sykes did is that you definitely want to record many tracks and pan them left and right so you get that nice big full sound. I think a lot of the, the fullness that you hear on the particular track and album is just a lot of tracks really tightly recorded and just really helps to you know, fill out that sound. It's not always just having the gain on 10. When it comes to cabinets, I would just use any kind of cabinet that has a decent speaker and it should sound perfectly fine. And when it comes to microphones, again, just mess around a little bit with the uh, position there to get a, a nice blend that you like. It might be recommended to use a Gibson Les Paul because, again, they do have that classic iconic sound, but any kind of a Les Paul guitar with humbuckers should get you pretty close. So when it comes to pedals, I didn't actually use any physical pedals. I just in post got my dry guitar tracks in Logic and just added some stock plugins. Uh, a little bit of chorus and a little bit of reverb. Actually, quite a bit of reverb because I do hear uh, quite a bit of reverb on that uh, track. So again, I think the isolated track was on YouTube somewhere at some point, but I wasn't able to find it. So I couldn't EQ match my particular guitar tracks to uh, the original isolated tracks, but I tried my best and tried to use my ear again to gauge how much chorus and reverb to add to my own tracks. I will say that at least quad tracking or using as many tracks as possible is a big part of the tone. Anyway guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked the video and learned something cool about this tone, go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing because we release videos like these on a weekly basis. So hopefully guys, we'll see you in the next video.